When was the last time you failed? When something went completely wrong? Because this video is all about the lessons I've learned from failing in a round of golf. If you want to skip straight to the lessons I've learned, please do fast forward towards the end of the video where I go into my five lessons learned from failure and how they've been applied to the game of golf. But let's dive in so that you can understand how I've learned from failing whilst playing the game of golf. Golf is a wonderful game when it goes well. It can be a real joy. The open air, spending time with friends, and the relaxation in the clubhouse after a hard round with a nice cold drink. But golf has a dark side, a side that no one ever tells you about. It has an amazing ability to bring out the worst in you. The side you try and keep hidden. The hide to your jekyll. The hulk to your banner. The reason for saying this is golf has a way of grounding us, but not in the way that most of us expect. It's not about manners or etiquette, although these are core attributes of any golfer, but rather how we deal with adversity. Let me explain. During a round of golf, you will have to face your demons. The voices inside your head that whisper sweet nothings, but not the kind that make you smile, but those which cause you to doubt yourself and get angry. Picture this, you're standing on the tee box, the area where golfers hit their first shot on a hole, staring down the fairway. You can see the pin, which is the hole, in the distance, just off to the right. It's about 350 yards away, so you go through your pre-shot routine, because everyone has one, even if you've never played before, which are those little idiosyncrasies that help you settle over the ball. And then, when ready, you swing the club at great speed, sending the ball on its way. The only problem is it doesn't quite go as planned. Rather than sailing down the middle of the fairway, it flies off, not straight, but off to the right, heading towards the deepest of all deep roughs, the kind that Bilbo Baggins would have trudged through in The Lord of the Rings, at which point it comes to a stop, settling against a broken branch on the ground. Shit, you think. That is not ideal. So off you trot, picking up your clubs, throwing them over your shoulder as you curse considerably under your breath. After a few minutes, you discover your ball hiding from sight in an absolute stinker of a position. Yes, that's a technical term. Without a moment's hesitation, you grab your trusty seven iron and stand over the ball, beginning the preparation phase for the next shot. But there is a problem. You haven't stopped thinking about your previous shot yet. In fact, you're still holding on to it. This in turn makes you more cross, positively making your situation worse. It's not until you notice that you are gripping the club tighter than ever before of how you're feeling. You are now desperate to take your frustration out on the golf ball, in turn sending it towards the middle of the fairway and towards the hole. The issue is, as you become tense, your technique goes out the window and all you are doing is focusing on smashing the ball further than you ever have before. The whites of your knuckles are now showing. Your teeth are clenched. You are ready to do battle with the golf ball. So you start your swing, reaching peak coil at the top of the backswing, the golf ball poised to be an instrument of blunt force trauma on an unsuspecting golf ball. The club head rushes towards the stationary ball nestled against the pain blades of grass in front of you. There's contact. There's a brief blink of the eyes as a natural reflex from such exertion of the body. The club head speeds through where the ball was placed as you commence your follow through, your gaze following the trajectory of the ball. Well, that's what you think. The problem is the golf ball hasn't flown from the lie, flying high into the sky, searching out the fairway, oh no. Instead, it's taken a far more dramatic route. Screaming off to the right in search of a bush about a hundred yards from where you stand. This is not a good result. It will no doubt require some further searching in the long grass, swishing of the golf club side to side to try and unearth another buried ball. All in the hope it is in a playable, i.e. you can hit it, position. It might sound like a story, but I can assure you this is a tale of golf woe up and down the land, repeated on a worryingly frequent basis. There is a reason why golf is described as a good walk spoilt. But the harsh reality is this situation was avoidable, and you only have yourself to blame. 
There are many takeaways from this experience because firstly, we know that we are all going to fail. In this instance, it's the golf shot. At some point, you will fail. It is inevitable. Just as Agent Smith told Neo in The Matrix, it is the sound of inevitability, Mr. Anderson. Also, it shows how we deal with failure that matters. I mean, do we hold on to it, almost bearing a grudge against the situation that had just unfolded? Or do we learn from it, accepting it's happened, letting the frustration go and focusing on what comes next? In golfing terms, this is what helps separate good from great golfers. Those individuals who can immediately get let go of what has just happened to solely focus on the next shot, chip or putt immediately puts them at an unfair advantage. And that's the light bulb moment that hit me. No matter how much the failure hurts, holding on to it does nothing but hinder our progress. It hurts us. In fact, it stunts our development. But we should not ignore it either, because accepting failure happens and then learning from it is how we grow as people. Understanding what caused the failure, what we can control, letting go of what we can't and learning how to avoid it in the future is why failure is so important. I mean, if we never fail, how can we learn? It always reminds me of being 11 and in ski school for the first time, frantically trying to keep up with a ski instructor as we navigated down the mountain. Read, very slight slope, but mountain sounds much more dramatic. As the instructor glided down the mountain, easily creating perfect snowplow turns, it is much harder than it looks. Whilst I concentrated on pizza, not chips, the shape the skis need to be in, she shouted back, if you're not falling over, you're not pushing yourself hard enough. Whilst I didn't fully appreciate the meaning at the time, this phrase has stuck with me ever since. She wanted us to learn, and you learn by doing. But by doing, you increase the chances of failing. And failing hurts, literally, if on skis. And that's how we learn. But that's how we improve. Once you've fallen over on skis, you don't want to do it again, so you work hard to improve so it doesn't happen. This is the best way to learn. And as a side note, the sooner you can go from snowplow turns to parallel turns, the more enjoyable skiing becomes, and a lot less tiring. So whether it be golf, skiing, your work, a hobby, or anything else, please don't be afraid of failure. Embrace the fact it will happen, and focus on learning from it so you can achieve the successful outcome you want. With that in mind, here are my five lessons to learn from failure. Number one, be nice to yourself. Often when things go wrong, it's a cue for us to start berating ourselves, beating ourselves up, because we end up using this failure as evidence that we are stupid, worthless, or simply not good enough. If this is you, stop and stop right now. Take a moment to think about how you'd support a friend through a setback that you've experienced, and then do the same for yourself. It could be, through watching an inspirational video, or buying an uplifting book, or treating yourself to some comfort food, perhaps cake. Ooh, who doesn't love cake? The nicer you are to yourself in the immediate aftermath of a setback, the sooner you will bounce back. Number two, remind yourself that everybody fails. When things go wrong, it can be all too easy to slip into the self-pity with thoughts of, why does this always happen to me, playing on a loop inside your head? This can be accentuated when we see friends or celebrities or anybody else carefully showing their social media posts with quotes such as hashtag blessed lives. Failure can feel even more painful in the spotlight of another's perfection, but please don't let that be you because nobody's life is perfect. Everyone messes up, everybody fails. Everyone has bad things happen to them at some point, but it's the successful ones who pick themselves up again and carry on. Number three is about look for the lesson in the failure. In my experience, there is always a lesson to be found in every failure. Think about Thomas Edison when he was asked about how he felt about repeatedly failing to design the light bulb. I mean, his response was amazingly simple when he said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Edison learned from his mistakes and eventually he found success. I mean, how could you learn from the setbacks you've experienced? What lessons are there to be learned from your failures? Number four is, what is possible now that you've failed? Hindsight goggles are a wonderful thing. So often when I look back on the things that have happened in my life that feel like an absolute disaster at the time, I end up actually being quite grateful for. 
If you've suffered a major disappointment, try projecting yourself forward in time and asking what could the better alternatives be that come from this failure? If you've been made redundant, could it lead to a better job? Could the breakup lead to your one true love? Could the exam failure lead you down a more exciting, perhaps entrepreneurial path? All good questions and ones which come from failure. Number five, at least you did something. Every time we put ourselves out there in some way, we open ourselves up to the possibility of failure. I mean, I know that this is true every time I take on an endurance challenge, but it's the same as every time we sit down to try for a team or write for an exam or try and create a piece of music or create a cake in the kitchen or go out on a date with somebody. We are opening ourselves up to be vulnerable and that's when things go wrong. Life is literally a failure minefield, but if we don't ever risk failure, we will never achieve anything in life either. The comfort zone is where dreams and ambitions go to die. So here's the takeaway. If you tried and failed recently, feel proud of yourself for trying and keep on trying. Lessons are there to be learned all along the way, so don't stop. And here's a bonus one. You no longer fear failure. Hopefully by now you should be starting to see that failure isn't something to be feared. It happens and it happens to everyone. I mean, the real question is how you deal with it. Use this insight to feel more confident and prepare as you go about your daily life and chase your dreams. Let me give you an example. Recently, I entered a 100 kilometer charity walk with some very close university buddies. I really, really wanted to complete this and I knew that I'd be gutted if I didn't. But that's exactly what happened. I had to pull out halfway through and it hurt both emotionally and physically. But I also know that I'll bounce back and I'll bounce back quickly because of everything that I now know about failure. I'll focus on the lessons I've learned. I'll ask myself, what is this failure might pave the way for? It could be a bigger and better adventure, for example. I'll also feel really proud of myself for pushing myself out of the comfort zone and ultimately trying. I'll set myself a new goal and I'll move on. It might not be easy, but we need to do it. Learning from failure is one of the most important lessons we can have in life, but it's not always the easiest thing to be done. But ultimately, that's it. These are the lessons that I've learned from failing. I think if you found this useful, I would highly recommend this video here where I talk about why saying no is the best way for you to achieve success. But with that, have a great day. I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.